Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. It is finally time for us to do our LED lighting review. If you remember a few weeks back, maybe pushing a month now, these guys, I'm going to call it JC Bright W, I'm not sure how we say that, JCB Rit W. Anyways, these guys here um, gave me a light to use and I have been using it and I promised you guys a bit of a light review and a bit of some test results and we're going to test these lights together so the lights just above us it is off right now it is off i will bring you up to it right here hopefully you remember this guy right here it's off because the spectrum it produces is not good for filming at all so i'm just going to turn it on here for us and then we can um have a look at it just for a quick second There we go. So if you remember, that's what it looks like when it's on. As I say, I'm not going to be filming with it on today because it does distort the quality of the footage, which that is the only downfall I found so far with this. So if you remember, this was a budget light, cost about $45 off Amazon. And yeah, I was hopeful to get good results with it. So before we get into testing, why don't we um, look at what this light's been, been growing for us. I put some sundews under here. And it's been a few weeks, so I can say the new leaves are shorter. Nice brighter red color to the um, outside edges of them. As to be expected with brighter lights. And we can get a close up here of this guy. So they look really good. This is a cape sundew. So it's not hard to please it. This is Drosera Adelaide. It's looking pretty good down here. This one was a late comer. I didn't put it down right away, but thought I would try. Getting some good results with it. I had some seedling cobra lilies that were kind of struggling. And they have all put out new, new growth. So that's nice. The growth is... It's green, not red by the looks of it. I'm just trying to see the latest, latest growth. That's got a tinge of red to it. Meaning the more red we have, the higher the um, the light. So it looks healthy anyways, the growth. You can see the new growth coming out of here. So it's nice red. I am happy with that growth, especially being an indoor. You know, I'm not used to growing in a grow room. This is my only source of light for these plants. So you can see the new growth on there. Nice healthy red. These plants have been like outdoors and everything else, so they're happy to be inside. What else can I show you? I stuck, and this was like almost destined to fail here. I stuck this Cephalotus in here. I replanted this guy and it sat. It just sat and sat and sat and never did anything. And then I, for like six months, so I just repotted it again and brought it in the house and put it under this light and you can see it has um it's finally starting to break its dormancy there if you see it at the tip of my finger the the growth rosette is starting to grow finally so could be coincidence could be um could be the lighting but either way i've given it quite intense light you can see the pictures are quite red on it so i'm happy that i can see something on that because there was definitely nothing on that for a long long time this was a little ping morensis. It is coming out of dormancy in here. You can see a big leaf jump. I took these out of the greenhouse, which is cold and, and darker. And they were still pretty much dormant. But you can see a nice leaf jump. Within a few months, this thing's going to be like draping over the pot. Look at that. That's a nice leaf. Good color in it too. Not too red, but um, pretty red. Where I see the biggest difference though is in my pinguiculas here. They do look amazing. Just like the last pinguicula we've seen, they came out of the greenhouse and they all were just plain green, just like this guy. Color, that one's gonna go pink. You can see that like the pinkest, the newest growth is pink, looking amazing. This one's the red flower, Laviana. I was surprised to see the color that it got, really nice. Anyways, amazing color on it. Coming out nice. The bloom, they do bloom in the low light. This bloom is just about to fade. If I can stop it from wiggling, I can maybe focus on it. A few days ago, the bloom still had lots of color, but now I see it doesn't. 
but yeah so the pings like look at that that's um some nice results for the pings I did um, elevate them up a little bit so they were closer to the light but anyways yeah so I am seeing some good reviews or good um, good results so let's get to the actual testing itself now I'm gonna test for three things I'm gonna test for what do, you want to, what do we want to look at here? I'm going to test for Lux. I'm going to test for PAR. And I'm going to test for actual wattage used. And what we're going to do first is we're going to test foot candles. So where can I set this? I want to set it in the same spot every time. I'm going to set it right across these two pots. All tests will be performed in the same area. So we have 29 foot candles of ambient light. And this is going to be 18 inches away. I did measure that earlier. And let's turn on the lights. So we have 465 foot candles minus what we were starting with. 35. So we have like 440. Not bad. Right. So Lux is almost like foot candles. Now you can see in the bottom there's a times 100 or times 10. So you can add a zero to this. So we're at 390 lux. And we're going to turn this on again. And we go up to 500 lux. Sorry, 5,000 lux. So 5,000 lux is definitely more than you need to grow like Phalaenopsis. Um, you're getting into some of the brighter, lighter light plants. Now to get 5,000 lux with a double fluorescent canopy, the plants need to be about six inches away instead of 18 inches away. If I do raise this up to six inches away, we're going to be at about 1500 lux. So I find it does produce quite a bit of light and I had to, since the last video, actually raise the, the light several times in order to make sure that my plants weren't actually getting burnt. So for you guys that aren't familiar with light readings, the lux or the lumens and the foot candles that we just did, that's a visible light that we can see. Um, of course the plants can see it too, but that's light that we can actually measure ourselves with our eyes. So the next thing we're going to measure is PAR. And this light meter might be a little bit trickier to um, keep in one place. Because the thing's not quite so, so user friendly. There we go, that's kind of got it there. So PAR photosynthetic active radiation is light that the plants can see and they need it to photosynthesize. So too strong of a par will burn them. Um, no par at all will will not let them grow. So we'll turn this on and let this get just. So right now we are at zero, we're at three par. And I'm just heading to my iPad here to hit the Wemo switch. and we're at about 80 par which isn't bad it's not super strong but um not super weak either i consider most carnivorous plants honestly to be low light plants anyways other than some of the ones that take like direct sun like a venus flytrap most of the most of the penthes and stuff like that can do just fine without it so i'm going to raise the um the uh, meter here so that we're six inches away and we go to about 250 par and back down. So the interesting thing though is I can go like lower than it and way away from it and we still have good par readings, decent par readings. We'll turn it back off. Now I'm going to hold this in front of you. This is my Wemo switch. I borrowed a switch from my fish tank lights which is some LED lights as well but um, so you're going to ignore all these numbers. The only one we are going to be looking at is not the average when on because I just plugged this light into it so it's not going to be the average at all. It's going to be the now. So it claims on the specifications even though it says and this is kind of where it gets confusing it claims on the specifications that if it will focus the actual power it says 45 watts but the average power draw is going to be 30 watts. So let's have a look here and let's do this together push the button 
14, 26, 29, 30 watts. So that is pretty exact on exactly what they're saying it's going to be. Go figure. 45 watts is kind of misleading because if you're doing the math for your gross base and you're going, I got a 45 here, a 30 here, a 40 here, they're actually not as high a watts as you would think they are. So this one is running at, now it's 29 watts, 29 to 30 watts. But you know what? That to me is actually a bonus because when I first did the math for this, because I have four of these lights in this grow room now, um, three different models. Anyways, I did the math and then I tested the power draw and I was actually like 33% less power than I thought I was running on it, so that's great. So all of these lights, you think you're running 45 watts, you're actually running 30 watts on this and getting all the same benefits that you were happy with when it was a 45 watt light. So I think that's kind of a bonus that um, I was pleasantly surprised when I did do the, the watts reading the first time and went, holy wow, that's awesome. So the fact that I'm getting all of this out of a 30 watt light is fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin you around for one last look here. wonder if this will work just like this. Sure it will. Here is another one of the exact same lights in the off position right now. But um, it's not on the Wemo switch, but it's just on this switch here. And I moved my Nepenthes out from under the, um, the light we were just looking at and put them a little bit lower because you'll find when Nepenthes have too bright of light, their leaves are going to go really red, and which I don't really like. I like the lush green look, and the leaves actually get smaller with intense light, although the pictures remain the same size or get bigger. So I thought I would test this out a little bit, and I put a big Mirabilis down here. This was one from the greenhouse, and I'll turn this back off. Hopefully we can see this. There's one from the greenhouse. So this shelf here is just over, just under four feet away from the light. It's a much bigger shelf. The old, the shelf we just looked at was here. And so this one goes one shelf down because I removed the actual shelf so it can stick up further. I did notice that I have some serious reddening of the leaves. This wasn't there before. Um, so I know it's getting as much light as it needs. This leaf is so much, thicker and heavier than the ones below it. You can see the ones below it, the older leaves, they do have some red blotches on them now. And that is not uncommon with a light burn on a leaf that's not used to growing under those conditions. Nothing to be worried about. And I stuck a few other um, Nepenthes down there as well, which if we go a little bit lower, you can see there's a few Venus flytrap cuttings in the jars there. Those are for a different day, but um, I brought in some ventricosa and I just I had to lower the the light level. You can see how when I get the plants they have nice big leaves, but even in the greenhouse, they get tiny leaves. Nice pictures on them, but tiny leaves because of the extra light. So I've been trying to back these off. This is about the first new leaf it's got, because they only get about a leaf a month, right? So this is the first leaf down there. It looks nice and healthy. It's a little bit bigger than the previous one. Nice and shiny and gloss glossy. So you can see another leaf here, and I'm trying to back it off so that we, we're staying away from this red burnt look. I want it to be nice and um, nice and rich and green looking. So it seemed to be getting some good growth, but that is literally with Ventricosa nearly four feet away from the light. I brought uh, another Mirabilis down here. This is a Viking, and it was just growing. Oops, here's really zoomed in now. It was just growing on my windowsill. My windowsill, on average, when the sun's not shining in it, gets about a hundred foot candles of light. Now that we're both from, we're all familiar with foot candles from measuring it, you can see down here some of the the red leaves are starting already. Even though this thing is four feet away from it, so the newest leaves are are less susceptible to that. But the old leaves that are used to a certain amount of light, you can see are really getting red, and you can see how the red even stopped here. Because obviously, just the way everything was positioned, we must be in a shadow here somewhere. So the light's not hitting here as hard. But yeah, so that is way down there. My last plant that I put down here is my Harasuta. Again, super shade-loving plant. So these aren't highlight plants. These are lowland, 
warmer growing, lower light plants. I'm not trying to do this with high light ones. I'm starting nice and slow. But yeah, so it's growing down there as well. So there is a bunch of readings and a bunch of um, comparisons. For the price of these lights, I am really happy with them. Um, I don't find anything wrong with them at all. Same with this light here. I've had to raise it up as high as it would possibly go. And yeah, I'm slowly putting stuff in the, the new grow space. Totally not used to growing in the dark like this, where these lights are my only source of light. I do give these lights um, a good review for their price. I mean, it, you just can't go wrong. So I have got a couple other lights like this in here that I'm hoping to review. And yeah, I'll come out with those reviews a little later and we'll do some testing on those ones as well. So if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.